Hey everyone, in this video we are going to learn how to monitor a Java based machine from a Zabbix server using JMX which is called Java Managed Extensions. As you can see on my screen, I've got a Zabbix server configured and a blank client configured on my screen. Let me show you the CLI of those two machines. Now, what we need to do in order to monitor the Java based components on the client from our Zabbix server, we need to follow certain set of instructions on the server side, on the client side, as well as on the Zabbix user interface. So, what we are going to do in this video is we are going to install a Zabbix Java gateway on our Zabbix server and configure it to receive the traffic from the client. And also we are going to configure a Tomcat server on our client machine so that it is running Java on it. And then finally, we will add that Tomcat host on the Zabbix user interface and see some monitoring metric. Let's begin. So on my server side configuration, I have to install Zabbix Java Gateway package. So it will install the Zabbix Java Gateway along with its dependencies. To avoid any troubles in our configuration, I have disabled the firewall and SLinux on both the machines. Now I need to edit my Zabbix server configuration in etc Zabbix, Zabbix server.conf file and I need to search for Java Gateway. Here it is. So my Java Gateway is on my home machine itself. So I'm going to use my home IP here. And I want my Java gateway to be used on port 10052. So I will use that here. And also I need to configure certain amount of polars for Java. So I'm going to use five polars in my configuration. So these three lines I need to edit, which is Java Gateway, Java Gateway Port, and Start Java Polars. I'll press Escape, colon, and write and quit from this file. Now I will go ahead and start the Zabbix Java Gateway using systemctl start Zabbix hyphen Java hyphen gateway service and I will enable it as well to make it up on boot time and since I changed the configuration of my Zabbix server file I need to restart my Zabbix server service as well and I will quickly look at the logs to see if any issues are there. And I'm not seeing any issues on the logs. All right. Now coming on to the client machine where there is a Java based application running and we need to monitor that. So currently uh, there is nothing running on this machine. So what we will do is we will install Tomcat on this machine using yum install Tomcat. And it's not able to find the Tomcat package. So we will use yum what provides Tomcat in order to see which package has the Tomcat application. So it says PKI hyphen servlet hyphen engine. This package has 
Tomcat. So we are going to install this package. All right, the installation is complete and we'll clear it. We will start the Tomcat service using systemctl start Tomcat and check the status of the service. Now we will configure the Tomcat configuration in such a way our Zabbix server can pull the information from this client machine. So let's go ahead and go on Etsy Tomcat and Tomcat.con file and we can edit this and Enter few lines here just the way I have mentioned here. So please note there shouldn't be any spaces on each of these lines after the slash. Otherwise, the configuration is not going to work. I'm using this slash because this whole thing has to be in one line. However, to show you better on bash, I'm using the slashes in the end of each line. So with this configuration, what we are basically saying is we need to run the JMX remote demo on port 9875 on this client machine. And we are also giving an IP to this particular machine. And this IP is of our client machine itself. We are not using any authentication, so it's false. And we are not using any encryption, so that as well is false. However, if you want to use those features, you can refer the official documentation. I will provide the official documentation link in the description of this video. We can write and quit from this file. And since we have made the changes on the configuration, we'll have to restart the Tomcat application and we will just check the status again and it's running. Now we need to check the port if we are able to tell it to the port from our server or not. I'll clear the screen from my server as well. So on my client machine, my IP is ending with dot 12 and my JMX daemon is running on port 9875. I'll just show that to you using this command. And as you can see over here, it's running on 9875 port. So I'm going to tell it from my Zabbix server and see if I'm able to download this port or not. And yes, I'm able to download this port. So I should be able to fetch the information from Zabbix server. Now the configuration is complete. Now let's set up the host on our Zabbix user interface. So this is our Zabbix user interface. We will go to configuration and click hosts and click on create host and choose the host as Tomcat. We'll add an interface and we will use the GMX interface. We will use the IP of our client machine, which is ending with dot 12. And we will use the port 9875, which we configured over there. We can add it in one of these groups. We can use the template as JMX. So there are various things which we can monitor from JMX, like generic Java, Tomcat, Cassandra, Kafka. So for this server, I'm going to use generic Java as a template because it has, you know, more number of items. And I will go ahead and add it. So as you can see, currently it's grayed out. We will wait for a few minutes for this to 
turn green. Or if you are impatient like me, what you can do is go to discovery. And execute the discovery. And then click hosts once again. Just wait for a few more moments. There you go. The availability icon is now green. We can go ahead and check the latest data of this host. And we can see the parameters related to Java are coming up on this particular page. All right, so this looks great. So a quick recap of what we did. We configured the server side, we configured the client side, and then we configured the Zabbix user interface. So this is our Zabbix server, which is pulling the information from this Tomcat server and displaying on the Zabbix UI in the form of latest data. I hope this has been informative. I would like to thank you for viewing.